starting a brand new series tonight, and it's called Coming Out of the Closet. Called Coming Out of the Closet. Now, here's the thing. It, we're not going there. Y'all calm down. I see a lot of people, like, giving me some looks. It's called Coming Out of the Closet. And, and, and I, okay, I, I have a story to tell you. I have a story to tell you. So, um, anybody else like a lot of clothes? You like clothes. You like clothes. You like clothes. You like clothes, right? I, I like clothes. See, here's the thing. Um, I'm a hoarder when it comes to clothes. You know what I'm saying? Like my wife, Liz, she'll, she'll tell me, Caleb, it's time for you to clean out your closet. I might throw away like one shirt. I'm like, babe, I cleaned it. You ain't clean. I was like, I went through it, and I can tell you an, an occasion that I can wear each one of my shirts to. I can tell you an outfit that I have for each one of my pants, and I can tell you at least three outfits I got for every one of my shoes. Like, my closet is clean. I know what's in there. I got it. She's like, yeah, but you wear the same stuff sometimes. Like, yeah, but that's because that occasion hasn't come up yet. But I, I love clothes, and, and, and I honestly hoard them well. A couple weeks ago, or a couple months ago, Liz was out of town. My wife, she, she was out of town. And so anytime my wife is out of town, my dog sleeps in the bed with me. That's just a fact. I, I love my dog. She sleeps in the bed with me. And so we're laying in bed. I promise you, it was like 3 something in the morning. And I'm asleep. Everything's nice and quiet. And I just hear this bang happen inside of my room. I have no idea what it is. But at 3 a.m., I'm partially saved. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to pray for you that you get to see Jesus, but I don't know if I'm going to act like Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, 3 a.m., I'm like, oh, no. I grabbed something that was right by my bed, and I'm like, man, what, what is this thing here? I, I had no idea what it was, and I'm, like, snooping around my house. My dog, I got a boxer. She's 50, uh, 56 pounds, so she's over there. She's barking. It's like, I haven't heard her do that before. I was like, I was proud and scared all at the same exact time. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm walking around, and I didn't see anything. Well, I tried to, I tried to go into my closet. And my, my closet door wasn't opening. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> Somebody want to hide behind my closet door. Bet. Backed up a little bit. And it, it was already, like, off the hinge. Like, it wasn't, like, closed. Like, it was kind of like crap, but it wasn't opening. So I ran. I threw a shoulder into it. I thought I was some big stuff. The, it knocked me backwards, and then I shined the light. But no, I, 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 tried, I tried to open the door. The door wouldn't open. So I took out my phone, and um, I, I started shining the light on. Like, what is behind my door? My whole rack that had all my shirts and everything had fallen off, and it pinned my door closed, completely closed. I was so mad because then it's like, here's the annoying part. You got to remove all the shirts, and then you got to take the time to put them, put, rehang them, and then you got to get like, like for me, I had some of the drywall was on the shirt, so it like made it dusty. Now they had like some white stuff outside. I had to wash some of those. It was just annoying. I didn't want to do You had to make a mess and then clean up the mess. Like, I don't like doing that. I really don't like putting clean clothes away, let alone clothes that fell out of where they was already supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? And so then, um, man, I, I get it fixed. It took me like a week to, to get it done, but I got it fixed. And so just like any smart guy did, I, I took, I took it, it was screwed onto the wall. I moved the anchor spots where it was screwed to because you can't re-drill into the same hole. Didn't know if you knew that, but now you know. You, you can't do that. So you got to make a new one. So I did that. I moved it over. I was like, all right, bet. This thing ain't going nowhere. I added an extra security bracket to it. I added an extra bracket to it to go on the wall. I'm like, this is foolproof. Let a tornado come through my room, and it, it ain't going nowhere. Well, a couple months later, or really a couple weeks later, we had somebody that was house-sitting for us. And uh, while my wife and I, we was out of town. And while this person was house-sitting for us, she said in the middle of the night, she heard this bang happen in the house. So she freaks out. And she's walking through the house trying to find what's going on. And my door to my closet was wide open. And so whenever she walked into my bedroom to see what all was going on, she said that my, the clothes rack where the shirts were was hanging on the outside of my closet. Like it fell and like slid all the way outside of the door. My shirts were literally coming out of the closet. They fell, they broke off, came out. Now, I was, I was mad because I had already spent money. I spent my time. I re-anchored it. I added another security bracket. Like, this thing was locked in and loaded. Like, I was mad that this thing happened again. I was also laughing, though, because it didn't happen to me. It happened to somebody else, so that was really funny. But I was mad that it happened. I was like, man, what is going on? So I did what any smart man does. I called someone who was smarter than me. And I had this dude come over to the crib, and I was like, bro, this keeps happening to me. What's going on? And he said, Caleb, you, 
there's, I can tell you your problem right now. He said, yeah, the screws that you're using, those are fine. The, I got like the metal hangers, you know what I'm talking about? Like the metal, the metal He said, the thing that you're holding on, that's fine. That's not a problem. He said, the problem is all of your screws, they're going into the drywall, the sheet rock. Like it's, it's, it's flimsy. It's, it's nothing. You have nothing going into a stud. The foundation that you're screwing into isn't good. So it's going to keep falling no matter how much you do because you hoard shirts and you don't listen to your wife and you don't throw clothes away. And so that's the only time I say I'm going to listen to my wife. And so he, he, he said, I was like, dang, all right, man, I, I get that. So he, he, took, he took the smaller screws than what I had put in my, then put in my, um, that I had already put up, and a smaller anchor than what I had already had in, my, in the wall already. And he put it against the wall. It's been probably like four or five months now, and not one thing has happened. And I put more clothes in it because, you know, Christmas, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? I put even more clothes in it. See, the problem was not really the amount of clothes that I had. The problem was not the wall itself. My problem was I was trying to hang things on a bad foundation. And at some point in time, it was hanging for a little while until another shirt got put on it and another one. And it started getting weaker and weaker. And I couldn't tell when it was going to break. It just randomly happened at the worst time while I'm trying to sleep. See, I wonder if that has happened to you and to I in our own personal lives. Like, I I wonder, maybe not you, maybe it was just me. There's been a relationship that I tried to anchor my life on. And as long as I have this person in my life, bro, my life is set. I'm straight. But as soon as that person leaves, my world just completely falls into chaos. Or as soon as she breaks up with me, or as soon as that friend leaves me, or as soon as I get uninvited to the parties that I was going to, or whatever the case is, I had that fight with that family member. It's almost like my world just completely falls, and I get stuff falling all out of the closet. Like I said, this kind of stuff, it's happened to me before, but what I learned is what you and I have to do is we have to watch what we are anchoring our life on because that's going to determine how long we're going to last. See, there's no point of a closet for me to have the closet right up here if it's going to keep falling and falling down, right? There, there ain't no point of that. Like, if that was the case, I'd just leave it on the floor like I did whenever I was growing up, and I'd be straight. You put it in the dryer, you spray it with water, you put it in the dryer for five minutes, it takes all the wrinkles out, and then you go on to school, and you're chilling. There ain't no point in that. If I, if I have this closet, if I, if I have that rack up high, it's because I want to utilize that. And it'd be stupid of me to think that I can just continue to put more and more things, more and more things on that rack with it being a bad foundation. It's not anchored into anything and expect for it to stay holding up. And then me be mad when it falls, saying it's that fault whenever really it was my fault because I didn't anchor it properly. I didn't put it in a good enough foundation. You see, um, how, how, many, how many of y'all, um, you, you kind of like looking at buildings? Like looking at buildings is kind of cool to you. Looking at buildings, okay, no? Wait till you um, pay for a house. You'll start looking at uh, buildings real quick. So like one of the things that I enjoy doing, like ha, I, have you ever been to New York? All right, so New York, uh, M- Miami has some things like this. Uh, Tampa has some things like this. Polk County ain't got nothing like these. Um, but I, I love going to these, like, big cities, right? And I love looking at, like, the super tall apartments. I love looking at them. I think they're pretty. I think it's so cool, like, how tall up they made it because, like, somebody had to get up there. And it wasn't finna be me. I don't like heights like that. And so I, I, I love looking at these things. But one thing I know, we got a picture of one building here. Isn't that pretty? So like, I would love to live there. It probably costs you $10,000 a week. But I would absolutely love to live in one of them. That, that picture right there is up in New York. That picture is up in New York. I think that's beautiful. I love living there. But here's the thing. Nobody is looking at that picture like, wow, that's a good foundation. <laughs> no, nah, we're looking at everything else, right? Who said, wow, that was a good foundation? Exactly. No, you didn't. Exactly. That, that, that's my point. Ain't, ain't nobody say that. But then you could have a building like this one that's all like warped and sideways, and you're like, oh, what happened to you? Like something, something, something that happened. He, anybody who, who knows about buildings, they'll say, man, that, that I'm sure was pretty at some point in time, but now it was just built on the wrong foundation, bro. Like now the whole thing is drifting. See, it's funny how 
the foundation that we build our life on, if it's good, we will never compliment it. Nobody's ever going to say anything good about it. We probably won't even think twice about it. But if it's bad, everything happens. All of our problems are now visible for everybody to see. So I I didn't even tell you my problem, but you heard it through the schoolyard just because everybody else starts talking about it. Right? Like if we don't have a good foundation, we will get to the point where all of our business and everything falls and we can't catch it all, and it's going to end up showing up on the outside. The, the damage that was done on the inside shows up on the outside. See, the Bible, it, it talks about this. It talks about how we need to be very careful and choose the right foundation because it actually matters. See, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 25, the Bible says this, So then anyone who hear these words of mine and obeys them, this is Jesus talking, is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, and the wind blew hard against that house, but it did not fall because it was built on a rock. That's like the equivalent to when I had my closet, when my closet fell, had from off rip, I had put the, I put the anchors in the studs of the wall on a good anchor, a good foundation, I'd have been set. I never would have had to have worried about something scaring me at 3 o'clock in the morning, making me bite my tongue. Like I, I never would have had to care about that had I put it on a good foundation, but I didn't. And so instead of this being my reality, This was, in verse 26 and 27, it says this, but anyone who hears these words of mine, again, Jesus talking about his message, anyone who hears these words of mine and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Who has ever built a sandcastle? Built sandcastle, built sandcastle, built sandcastle. Isn't it great? Don't you enjoy doing it? It's so much fun when you do it until that wave comes. I ain't never been more mad at water. It's like you stand in front of it. You think like you like the Avatar Airbender. Like you like doing all these hand type stuff, like trying to push the water back. And you putting like your foot in front of it, trying to make sure nothing happens. You always try to dig a ditch around it, thinking that the water's going to go in the ditch first. And then that one wave comes and just knocks everything over. I get so mad. That's what he's saying. He's like, yo, if, if you listen to my words, but you don't. You don't do what I'm trying to help you and tell you to do. It's as if you were a foolish man who built his house on the sand because when the rain poured down and the rivers flooded over and the wind blew hard against that house, it fell. And what a terrible fall that was. You see, I wonder if there's been times in your life and in my life where we have put a foundation. What, what, what does put a foundation mean? Man, maybe, maybe it's I put my trust uh, in a relationship. Expecting that relationship to give me all my happiness, to give me all my joy, to take me to the next place that I wanted to go. Maybe I put my faith in a coach or a teacher because I said, you know what, I wanted to play ball in college. Or I wanted to get a scholarship to go to this university. And so, bet, I'm putting all my faith in you, all my faith in you, and then you let me down. And so now my world crumbles. Maybe it's been in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. Maybe, maybe it's been with a, a family member of yours. Man, I thought you were the only one in my family that I could trust, but even you let me down. And then now you feel isolated and like you're walking around with a hole in your heart because the foundation that you were trying to build on, it fell out from under your feet and you couldn't do anything to protect it. You had no notice of saying, hey, in two minutes, something really bad is going to happen. You better get out of there. You didn't have no warning or nothing. It just happened. And just like what the Bible says, and what a terrible fall that was. See, if you and I really want to build a life that's going to last long, if you and I really want to build a life that's actually going to mean something, build a life that's actually going to be able to stand whatever is going to happen, like COVID-19, like transferring schools, like getting a new friend group, like being broken up with, like trying to figure out what I'm going to do after high school. Is it work? Is it college? Is it sit on the couch? I don't know. When we're talk, trying to figure out what we're going to do during all these different transition points in life and everything that life is trying to throw at us, if we don't have the right foundation, we are going to crumble 
and fall. But if we have this right one, if we have a strong one, then we're going to be able to go through them. It doesn't mean that we're not going to go through the rain or through the hard times or through the things that are going to try to make us knock down. It doesn't mean that we're not going to go through those. We still are, but we're going to be grounded and founded in something that is going to be so much stronger than a person, an individual, or something that we could even do to where no matter what happens, we're going to be able to stand strong. You can have this kind of a life. All right, well, yo, that sounds kind of good. I want to do that. How can I do that? The verse says it. It says, whoever hears these words, these words, not a preacher's words, whoever hears these words, the Bible, not what Hollywood says, no, whoever hears these words, not what Twitter says, no, whoever hears these words, not what Snapchat says, no, no, whoever hears these words, man, you're like, and you listen to them? You're like a wise man. See, this Bible, I don't think we give it enough credit for what it actually is. How many of y'all have ever taken an open book test in school? You ever taken an open book test? Open book test? I absolutely love an open book test. I love it. Let me tell you my first experience with the open book test. I was in college. I was in college, and I was in an anatomy and physiology class. Okay? Anatomy and physiology. Okay? Talking about studying the body and stuff like that. And um, I was in the class, and they said, the teacher said, all right, y'all could take out your book in order to find every single answer. Uh, there, I can't remember how many questions there were. There was over 30, less than 50. Um, he said, you, you, could do, you could use the book to answer every one of your questions. But as soon as you're done with your test, you're able to leave. I just heard I get an early weekend the quicker I get done with my test. Just being straight up. That's how I thought. And so I had my book sitting right next to my, to my test. I didn't crack my book open one time. I thought I knew everything. I genuinely, like, not like being, like, bragging or anything. Like, I studied. I really thought that I knew what I was supposed to do. I knew the answers. And then I sat there and I was going through it, I was going through it, going through it. I was one of the first ones to finish the test. I walked that test up there confidently. Like, bang, go ahead, give me a hundo, let's go. It's going to be a great weekend. They gave me back the test. And all the test said on the top, it said, see me after. It didn't have a grade, it didn't have a number, it said, see me after. I'm not playing, I'm not playing, I am not playing. So I was like, okay, what does this mean? I went and I saw the teacher after class. And the teacher said, yo, Mr. Thomas, you, you sit right here in the front of the room. I always sat in the front row. I always sat in the front row in the middle. He said, you sat right here in the front, uh, the front row. It's like, yes, sir. He said, um, you had the opportunity to use your book. Yes, sir. He said, I was sitting at my desk and I never saw you one time crack open the book. He said, uh, I said, I didn't think I needed it. I thought I knew the answers. He said, the problem was you thought you knew more than what you actually did. Because there were some questions on the test that I had put that we did not go over in the class, and I didn't realize it until I gave y'all the test. And so what I did was, rather than saying we're going to postpone the test, I said, you can use the book on the entire test. But you still chose not to. And so you guessed your way through life. You assumed your way. You, you tried to make it sense in your own head rather than, using the resource that I told you you could have, but because of that, you, you failed the test. Yo, can I take it again? He's like, no, you can't. It's like, it's a test. It, <laughs> he said, I don't know what high school you went to, but in college, you don't get to retake a test. Once you take it, it's done. It's like, man, kind of tough, bro. I'm cute though, right? I ain't say that. So, man, I, was, I had every opportunity to get a 100 on that test. I had the resource. I just didn't crack it open. I didn't do anything with it. I didn't even try. The Bible says, man, whoever listens to my words and does them, whoever uses this Bible on the open book of test of life, 
because you and I are gonna face some problems and some situations that we might not have learned yet. But the good thing is the answer's in here. And if I take the time to actually look for the answer in life, then I will be like a wise man that has a strong foundation, which means relationships might leave me, things might happen in the world, culture might lose its mind, but I have still stand strong. Somehow when their life gets worse, mine is getting better. Somehow when everybody's losing their money, mine is growing. Somehow when everybody's dealing with all this anxiety and depression, and things are going crazy, I have some kind of an inner peace that I can't explain it and I can't logically tell you how to get it besides the fact of saying, I'm using this in order to guide, lead, and direct my life. Everybody stand to your feet. See, here's the reality. A foundation that is built on Jesus, on his words, on his promises, on his standards will last I don't care what you put in front of it. If you build it on that, I promise you it will last. I promise you. I've seen it time and time again. I've seen it happen in my own life. I've seen it in people close from me, and I've seen it on Facebook from people posting. I've seen this thing work, but here's the thing. A foundation that's built on Twitter, foundation built on TikTok, his or her preference, your feelings, Hollywood, uh, whatever it is, it's going to crash. Why? Because it's bad? No, because it was never meant to be built on. I can add that to my life. I have no problem with TikTok. I ain't got no problem with Twitter. I ain't got no problem with none of that. Rock it out. Love it. But it's not supposed to have your life built on it. I build my life on these things. It's like taking a pyramid and turning it upside down. It's not meant to hold all that. But that base, that foundation, I put Jesus as the foundation of my life, then everything gets built on Jesus. My dating life is built around Jesus. My friend group is built around Jesus. The music I listen to is built around Jesus. Entertainment that I choose for myself is built around Jesus. How I choose to hang out with people is built around Jesus. What I choose to do when I'm with him or with her is built around Jesus. The conversations and the language that I use is built around Jesus. When I do that, then no matter what happens in life, I promise you, you'll be able to stand strong and stand tall. Listen, it's early 2022, two weeks into this thing. And I don't know what 22 is gonna bring, but what I do know is you and I are not ready for it if we don't let Jesus be the foundation of our life. But if we allow him to be the foundation of our life, it does not have to be a loom and gloom, oh my goodness, I'm so scared of the future. It can be a come on, let's go, what you got, because I know what my foundation is in, and I'm ready for anything that you have for me. Let's pray. Father God, we love you so much. We are so grateful that you allow us to build on you, that you don't, you don't just stay far and distant away from us, but you want to be so close to us as to support us. Father God, I pray that we take advantage of the relationship that you want to have in us. And for all of my friends in this room, Father God, for all the students, for all the leaders, God, I pray that we stand firm in who you are, that we use the resources that you've given us, pastors, our friends, our mentors, the Bible, your word, worship music, We use all these different things so that we can fully tie into having you as a foundation in our life. Jesus, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.